good morning i welcome you to this session uh, today we will be discussing the matching of pump and system characteristics in last class we have discussed the pump characteristic which is typically the relationship between head developed by the pump with the flow rate at a given rotational speed that means at a given speed of the pump what is the relationship between head and discharge or the flow rate head developed by the pump and the flow rate through the pump so let us look on the diagram again that if we see this diagram that hq the typical hq plot for a pump considering a backward curved vein or whatever it may be that is typical hq plot this is the characteristic curve along with that if we plot the efficiency well the efficiency variation we will see that the efficiency curve goes like this so that means if we also plot the efficiency versus this is the maximum efficiency point so this is the this is sometimes known as eta efficiency flow rate characteristics and this is the head discharge characteristic characteristics of pump well and this is the head discharge characteristic so characteristic characteristic curve characteristic of pump so the characteristic curve of the pump also describes the efficiency flow relation this two sets two curves one is the eta versus the efficiency versus q and one is the head versus q describe the characteristics of the pump one is the efficiency flow characteristic another is the head flow characteristics and this is valid for a given rpm so n is fixed now you see definitely the point where the efficiency is maximum is the design point that means the pump is running at its maximum efficiency condition and corresponding to that the flow rate corresponding to that is the design flow rate if you write q here so this will be the design flow rate qd so therefore this is the point known as the design point that means this is the design point of the pump design point now pump is rated for its at its design point that means it will develop this much amount of head and this much amount of flow at its design point means when the efficiency of the pump overall efficiency of the pump will be maximum but in actual operation what will be the operating point of the <coughs> pump depends upon the system resistance so pump is not in isolation pump doesn't run in isolation so whenever there is a pump there is a system to the pump that means what is that system that is suction line and the delivery line so therefore the pump operating point depends not only on the pump characteristics but also the system characteristics and the matching between the two now let us see what is a system you look back to this figure now you see here this is the pump so this suction pipeline with all the vanes strainer the inlet intake inlet of the suction pipe delivery pipes this is the system to the pump that means pump is attached to this system that is the suction and delivery pipes so therefore when the flow takes place through this pipe along with the pump the operating point of the pump will be decided by the system characteristics of the will, will depend on the system characteristics also well so what is the system characteristics let us find out system characteristic means that what is the relationship between this head loss through the system and the flow rate which gives the head to be developed by the pump we know that head to be developed by the pump is given by what let us see here that head that has to be developed by the pump is that means the energy that has to be imparted on the fluid while it flows from c to d that means total head hd minus hc so this is the head developed by the pump this must be equal to this potential head difference between the sump and the upper reservoir because the fluid has to be put from the point a to the point a along with all the losses that it incurs along its flow that means 
the losses through the system, system means the suction pipe and the delivery pipe, not only on the pump, also have to be taken account. So, that we can find out the total head developed by the pump. That means, this is the difference between the elevation level of these two water surface that is H s known as static head plus all the losses. If we write the Bernoulli's equation at this point between this point and this point and between this f and d and from these two equations we have shown that the total head developed is equal to this difference in elevation head between these two surfaces that is the static head known as static head plus all forms of hydraulic losses in the suction and delivery pipes. Let us find out the mathematical expressions for that. Now, let us write the head loss in the suction pipe as H 1, suffix 1 is the head loss in the suction pipe, which is the loss in total loss in the energy per unit weight due to flow through the suction pipe. This comprises two distinct part, one is the loss due to fluid friction that is the friction between the fluid and the solid wall which can be expressed as a friction coefficient f 1 that means, this is the Darcy's friction coefficient which can be expressed in terms of the friction coefficient l 1 where l 1 is the length of the suction d 1 is the diameter of the suction pipe l 1 is the length of the suction pipe 1 is the suffix suffix 1 used for the suction side v 1 square by 2 g where v 1 is the velocity of flow through the suction pipe. So, the typical fluid friction loss can be expressed in terms of a Darcy's friction coefficient f 1 times the l 1 by d 1 that is the length to diameter ratio and the velocity head. Plus another loss take place due to the vanes and valves. See in this pipe when the fluid flows to there are vanes, sometimes a valve may be there in the pipeline usually to control the flow a valve is given at the delivery side. Valve is not usually given is usually not given in the suction side because of the cavitation restriction because we want to minimize the losses in the suction side that I will discuss afterward. Usually a valve is placed in the delivery side so that to control the flow through the pump we want a less flow rate. So, we operate with the valve so that it gives a le lesser opening through the flow so that the flow is controlled. So, to control the flow through the delivery line, we insert a delivery at a valve in the delivery line, different types of valves are inserted. So, the when the fluid flows through the valves, there is a loss of it. Similarly, the while fluid flowing through this vein due to the change of direction, change in the direction of flow, there will be a loss. So, all these losses as you know are termed as minor losses in fluid mechanics. So, this minor loss is the second kind of loss that takes place in course of flow through these pipes. This can be expressed as some constant time d v 1 square by 2 g. As you know all the losses can be expressed in terms of a constant loss coefficient k let it k 1 for the suction pipe times the velocity head. All right, I think ok. Similarly, we can think of the head loss in the delivery side to consist of these two distinct part, one is the usual friction loss, the friction between the fluid and the solid wall L 2 D 2 into V 2 square by 2 G, okay. plus similarly K 2 V 2 square by 2. That means, this H 1 and H 2, please, please. K 1 is due to bend losses. Again I am telling this is the usual friction loss. So, second part takes care of all the minor losses that means losses due to bends and losses due to valves. There are so many things in suction pipe, there are strainers, non-return valves, there is no such this type of valve, gate valve or globe <coughs> valve the delivery line, but there are strainers. There is another valve we are known as non-return valve, known as non-return valve so that the fluid does not come to this sum from the pump. So, this is the non-return valve, you understand that is the non-return valve. So, this there is a non-return valve, this is a strainer. So, all these things are there, moreover there is a pipe bend. So, therefore, this first term in these two equations are the usual friction loss that is between uh, friction between the fluid and the solid one. 
while the second terms in both the equations represent the minor losses. That means, losses incurred due to the flow of fluid in the pipe because of uh, their <coughs> flow takes place through the pipe bends because of their change in direction of flow through the pipe bends, through the uh, valves, through strainers at the intake, turn valve at the intake, all these things are taken account in this. If there is no valve, no bend, no minor losses, then this will be 0 all, all, of course. So, therefore, we see this H1 and H2, <coughs> sum of the H1 plus H2 <coughs> is the total head loss in the system. <coughs> system. Now, you see that V1 can be expressed uh, in terms of the flow rate at q by pi d1 square 4. Similarly, v2 can be expressed as similar 4 q by pi d2 square. That means, our intention is to replace the <coughs> velocity of flow in terms of the flow rate. So, therefore, this h1 will be, if I just substitute it, what will be the values of h1? H1 will be 8, 8 by G into F1 L1 by D5, D15 Q square. All right, plus what will be this value? If I put this there, then 2 K1 by G. All right, 2 K1 by G pi here the pi will be there, okay. pi square will be there, well, so here also pi square will be there, divided into q square. All right. Similarly, h2 will be 8 pi square g, please check it, very simple thing, but I can write the wrong expression, okay. q square, what it will be? 8. Very good, 8, because the same thing, 8 pi square by g, k1. We add there also d2 to the power 4. Please tell me it is very simple. d2 to the power, uh, sorry, it is d1. So, here also d1 to the power 4. So, here also d2 to the power 4. All right. D1, D1, H1, F2, F2, F2. Very good. Is there anything K2. wrong? K2. K2. Yes. Oh, this is K2. <coughs> K2 is already. Okay. Very simple thing. But these are not the important things. The important thing is that all these things, this is constant. That means, these are constant. These things constant. So, therefore, I can tell that h1 plus h2 <coughs> is equal to some constant into q square, some constant into q square, that is the sole intention. This constant includes the friction factor. Definitely, one thing you have to understand, this friction factor does not vary with the flow velocity in the turbulent flow region. So, these are constants. Apart from, the, uh, apart from them, other parameters are the length, diameter, that is the geometry. So, for a given system of a given length and diameter and for given values of loss coefficients, they are constant. So, constant into Q square. Okay? Now, the head to be developed by the pump, head to be developed by the pump <coughs> is what? Head to be developed by the pump, by the pump is what? is equal to the static head plus this loss h1 plus h2 which we have derived earlier. That means, this is hs plus this constant rate is expressed by c, c q square. That means, this is the total head that pump has to develop. This can be thought of as a resistance. That means, as if this hs plus c q square is appearing 
as a as an opposing head that a fluid has to overcome to go from the sump to the upper reservoir. That means this is the total resistance head given by the system. So if this we have write as the H system, that system develop this head as a resistance, that is an opposing head that has to be overcome by the fluid which is to be pumped from the sump to the upper reservoir. So if we now draw this in the figure of HQ, HQ plane where we already draw, drew the pump characteristics and it appears like this. That means this, this is the system resistance curve. This is HS. Let this is HS. So this is again a parabola. Sorry, this is like this. That means this is HQ characteristics of system. Okay, HQ characteristics of the system. That is HS static head. Sometimes it is known as static lift. So HS plus constant into Q square. Now therefore we see this is the system characteristics and this is the pump characteristics, HQ characteristics. So they intersect at this point. So this must be the operating point. So therefore this is the operating point. Where they will intersect that will be the operating point. That means if the system is attached, if the pump is attached to this system, if the pump is attached to this system, then this will be the operating point. You understand that this will be the operating point. That means this the pump will develop this amount of heat and will develop this amount of flow rate. This is the system characteristic curve. So the system characteristic curve valid is valid. For example, the pump characteristic curve is described for a particular pump. That means the pump geometry is fixed, okay, and moving with a constant speed, constant rotational speed. In. Similarly, the system characteristic curve is valid for a particular system. That means pipes of given diameter and length and bends, fixed bends, and if there are valves, the valve settings are fixed. Because if you change the valve setting, the loss coefficients will change. That means you can construct different system resistance curves by changing the any of these parameters. The most easier way by changing the valve settings. That means if you change the valve settings, the system characteristic curves will change because the loss coefficients will change. That means the constant defining the system characteristics curve will change. You look here. That means we can draw different system characteristics curve. So different. These are all system characteristics curve. These are. <coughs> Parameter, the parametric variations are the different settings of the valve. Or you can consider different dimensions of the pipeline. Okay, these are the different settings. So that means if you change the valve position, that means if you create the system resistance, different system resistance, then the operating point may shift from here to there. That means this is a system resistance where you close the valve. That means this is creating more resistance to the system. For a given flow, the opposing head will be more. So therefore, the pump has to develop that head at steady condition. So the operating point will be shifted to this point. So therefore operating point is decided by the intersection of the system characteristics curve. That means the system resistance characteristics that the opposing head which has to be developed by the system, how does it vary with the flow rate and the intersection of the system characteristic curve with the pump characteristic curve. So this point may not be the design point. This is the design point. For example, here you see any of these three points for the three system characteristics curves are not the design point. But here you see if the system, if you take this as the system characteristic curve, the operating point is very close to the design point. Now the closeness of the operating point to the design point depends upon the fact that how good an estimate is made about the system resistance while design of the pump was made. Clear? Okay. Now, after this, I will discuss the effect of speed and diameter, effect of speed and diameter on pump characteristics. Okay. 
effect of speed and diameter on pump characteristics. Now, we have seen that this HQ characteristics is valid for a given speed. That means, n is equal to constant for a constant value of this speed. So, we can draw a family of these characteristic curves at different speeds. Similarly, we can draw a family of curves for different diameters. So, not only the speed, the diameter of the impeller is fixed because for a fixed geometry of the pump and moving with a fixed rotational speed, this is the HQ characteristic. That means, in one two dimensional plane, we can show a family of curves with different parametric values of either n and d, which means that what is the influence of n and d on the pump characteristic curve. How to find it? Very simple, very simple thing. Let we have a h q curve. Mathematically, we have to relate the h and q with n. Now, if we recall that we know from similarity analysis, pi 1 term is q by n d q and pi 2 term is g h by n square d square. So, this gives us the clue to find this mathematically. We know that we are, we can only show the family of curves at different rotational speed for different diameters for a pump of the same homologous series. We cannot show these families of curves where one curve pertains to centrifugal pump, another curve pertains to axial flow pump. That will not do. That I discussed at length earlier. That means, it will represent the family of curves at different altered conditions of, for example, the rotational speed, the diameter in the same homologous series. That means, for that series, <coughs> the conditions have to be similar provided, conditions will be similar provided the pi 1 and pi 2 terms remain the same. That means, for two such machines, that q by n d q will be same and g h by n square by d square will be same. So, therefore, if we consider only the influence of rotational speed, influence of n for example, that means, we keep d constant, influence of n if we want to find then we can simply write q2 by q1 is n2 by n1. Well, that means to find out the altered flow from a given flow rate, we will have to multiply only by this ratio because they are directly proportional to their corresponding rotational speed. Similarly, what is h? h2 by h1, similar way for the same diameter h by n square is constant that means is equal to n2 by n1 whole square. That means h2 is equal to h1 n2 by n1 whole square. That means we can find out that means if we have point A, different points graphically, it is a primary school level job. So, we can find out the corresponding point A dash, B dash, C dash like this. So, that I can construct the curves. So, this is n 1, this is n 2 by this relation. The most interesting thing is that if you look, if you see these two relations that q is proportional to n and h is proportional to n square, we can say from this h is proportional to q square, which means that the locus of such similar points if you join, this will give a series of parabolas. This is series of parabolas that similar points. Similar points means at different speeds. That means this is n3. That means c is c dash, c double dash, b, b dash, b double dash, a, a dash, a double dash. That means all the similar points. That means if c is the point corresponding to that, the similar point is c dash. That means Corresponding to C, the flow, if it is scaled down to another uh, rebel, uh, rotational speed and H is scaled down, so this will come to this point. So, the similar point corresponding to C or C dash to another rotational speed N3 is C double dash. So, all these similar points pass through a parabola. The locus is a parabola. And in fact, this is the system resistance curve when HS is 0. Let me tell you again that I now, here if you see that this is a system resistance curve starts from H s. Why? The head developed has to be developed by the pump or the opposing head created by the system is H s plus some constant into Q square, which we have seen earlier, which we have seen earlier. This is the H s plus H 1 plus H 2 that is constant into Q square. 
Now, in case when there is no static lift, it is 0. That means, the, this is the pump delivers fluid in the same horizontal plane. That means, this is the pump outlet, this is the pump inlet, the fluid is coming in the same horizontal plane. Here, the total head is H1, here, the total head is H2. So, H2 is greater than H1. So, therefore, the opposing head that has to be developed by the pump in pumping the fluid from this place to this place. Here the word pumping does not mean that there will be a change in the elevation. So, in that case the static head is 0. So, it is only to overcome the losses. This loss include the exit loss also. There are also these losses include dead exit loss. That means, this H2 in H2 the exit loss is also there. That means, which takes care of the velocity head generated by the pump. That means, the static head is 0. In that case, H system is simply is c into q square. That means, in that case, the system curve goes through the origin. That means, in this case, therefore, we can conclude that the locus of the similar points at different speeds in HQ characteristics lie on a parabola which passes through origin and these are in fact the system resistances and these are in fact the system resistance or the system characteristic, system resistance or system characteristic, both the word goes system characteristic. So, these are the system characteristic. So, they are on the parabola h proportional to q square, which gives a very interesting thing. That means, if we have a operating point here, now if you think in terms of an operating point that this is the system resistance and this is the pump characteristic curve system resistance means system characteristic curve, pump characteristic curve, this is the intersection point. Now, if the pump speed is altered to N2, we can find out the corresponding similar point which is again is nothing but the operating point. That means, this operating point at the speed N2 can be found out by direct application of the similarity principle, similarity law, which means the corresponding similar points of C is C dash which also lies or which is also the intersection of the system characteristics and the pump characteristics. Because the locus of these operating similar operating points at different speeds lie on the system resistance curve. All right. If this is another system resistance curve where this pump is set to that system, so this will be the operating point. Now, without altering the system resistance, that means without altering any pipeline without altering the valve setting, if the pump is set to another rotational speed, then we can find out this operating point by the direct application of the similarity principles, because the point, the similar points lie on the system resistance. Well, understood? Now, the effect of diameter variation is very simple, I will not go into that detail. Effect of diameter variation is again, if we write again that pi 1 is, is again, this is a primary school job, I feel that pi 2 is g h by n square d square, then it is simple when the influence of d we consider only the influence of d, then n is constant. That means, q by q 1 by d 1 q is q 2 by d 2 q. That means, q 2 is found out as q 1 into what d 2 q by d 1 q. H same way that H 2 for a fixed n value of n, H 2 will be H 1 into d 2 square by d 1 square. Here we see that H is proportional to q to the power what? H is proportional to q to the power 2 by third. So, this is the locus h q locus for the similar points. So, therefore, for a alteration of d, the operating points may not be found out by application of the similarity laws, because the locus of all similar points in h q plane is not the system resistance curve, but they follow the curve which, where h is constant into q to the power 2 by 3rd. However, we can construct the curve at different values of d by changing the Q that means to find out the new Q with the new diameter d2 by application of this formula and new h with the applicate to the 
to for due to the change in new diameter by the application of this formula so that we can construct the curve for different that means if we have an hq curve like this for one diameter d1 we can construct this for another diameter d2 where n is fixed what happened this is n is fixed and here t was fixed d is fixed d was fixed. Well, hmm. any query? Today I will finish here. So please, any question? Any question? Okay, thank you.